In today's episode, I am attempting to race a species that I have raced before. But last time I only produced males and no females. That left me unsatisfied, so here I am trying again. It is the Lobo Bunea Asetus, the blushing emperor moth from Uganda, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Gabon, Sierra Leone, Nigeria and more places in Africa. In captivity they are easy to breed, but I'm a little bit cursed with this species because I always seem to raise males and no females for some reason. So let's do a somewhat of a speed run here. In captivity you can feed this dude a ton of things honestly, anything from cherry to sweet gum to privet to willow and all of it honestly just works. It just works, it does. This is the second video that I am making about this species. I guess that I won't go into that much detail this time around because I've already explained a lot in my previous video. One thing to remember is that uh, the caterpillars do live in groups for a short while. A lot of caterpillars of several moth species have the tendency to be social while they are young and small, only to develop into socially living, fully grown caterpillars later in life. This species is no exception. One can imagine that due to their afrotropical origin, they appreciate warmth, which is exactly what they do. Surprisingly, though it also seems that they do rather well on room temperature, even in suboptimal conditions. In captivity, this species is rather strong and very resistant to unusual conditions and stress, making it a nice species to observe in captivity. When they grow bigger, you can see them slowly turn green, and this is the moment that they become solitary and prefer to have some space for themselves. They will start to consume large volumes of food, which should frequently be replaced to keep them happy and well fed. Moths from the genus Lobo Bunea are amazing species to rear in captivity. One thing I find very underrated about Africa, underrated about Africa is its overwhelming biodiversity when it comes to insects. Interestingly you, interestingly, you will hear a lot about lions, zebras, rhinos, giraffes, gazelles, bisons and crocodiles as soon as you watch any documentary about nature, but you rarely hear about the stunning biodiversity of unique insects that Africa is harboring. I guess that maybe my channel can change that somehow. In fact, I have some contacts in Africa that study moths. Maybe I should visit them someday, especially if my channel grows big enough to do crazy things like that in the future. That would be awesome. It seems this species produced two to three baroods a year and in most of the countries where it lives in Africa. It seems this species produces two to three broods a year in most of the countries where it lives in Africa. Females attract males by releasing an airborne pheromone at night. Males fly into the wind in a zigzag pattern and pick up the scent plume with their highly developed antennae. In the wild they've been reported also to feed on mango and it's been said that they also like being raised on eucalyptus in captivity as well. A short time later the caterpillars did pupate. So here feel free to witness the pupa of this lovely species. When this species wants to pupate they have a habit of burrowing in the soil and pupating underground. In captivity I just used tissue paper. And wow there you go, there is the adult male. Fun fact, their common name, the blushing emperor moth, is yet another one I made up myself completely. It's because they are pink hind wings and eye spots which makes it look like they are blushing to me. For me, rearing this species from eggs to moths is mostly problem free. Anyways, the males of this species, I've had them before. And here is the female, but something is wrong with her. First of all, it seems her wings were slightly deformed, unfortunately. Not only that, it seems this female was the only female I had out of all my caterpillars. So for the second time, my rearing of this species did not go the way I wanted it to go. Hmm, I guess I have to try a third time next year or later. I guess you can't succeed on the first try with every species of moth, now can you? It also seems this female had a mutation that gave her an extra eye spot that this species you normally does not have. This is pretty freaky. Sorry for handling her roughly for a bit, it's the only way I can show this to YouTube. So in conclusion, I raised a freaky moth mutant female. 
Though the outcome of my rearing experiment was unexpected, it is unfortunately not what I wanted. I only raised one mutant female and a bunch of males, and while unexpected, it's not what I was aiming for. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the short life cycle though, and next year I'm definitely going to try again. Bye bye!